Mississippi. Uh, we've got with us uh, Jimmy Duck Holmes, who's a blues musician and Grammy uh, Grammy nominee. Uh, uh, you you with us, Mr. Holmes? Yes, I'm still here. How are you doing? We've got you got you live and on the air. Are you doing all right? Yeah, I was able to wake and see the bright sunshine. So I think I'm going to hum it. Hey, there we go. Uh, now, tell us a little bit. The my understanding is this weekend the Bentonia Blues Festival is happening. Well, uh, started back in uh, nineteen seventy two. It really started off as just a community gathering uh, with the DJ. Last year we had live entertainment, just one live music act, and, and it grew from there. So what what can people expect this weekend at the at the festival if they if, if, who all's going to be there? Well, of course, Bobby Lee's going to be, uh, Ariel Boss, Gallo West, just a whole host of my do not have to see a schedule right in front of me. It's going to be a lot of fun and a lot of music. It's great. And how long has it been going on? This is coming to pass me fifty years. Fifty years. That's fantastic. And is there, uh, can you buy tickets uh, there? Can you, you pay to get in uh, just by? No, uh, uh, in the past, I had to charge, you know, admission fee and uh, the public or the fan or the tenant or the real general, they told me stuff, or even if they don't understand how to do that, and I said, it doesn't have a public order. Now, of course, it's straight room with donate just because of the event. Trying to help make sure I don't let it go off the sign. And all this, no, no, no admission fee. And where, for folks who want to come out, and I mean, how many people do you normally get at the at the festival in terms of of audience? You mean number wise? Yes, sir. I have had anywhere from two hundred to the last count. They had a full deck to do. You can estimate for outside the. The biggest estimate I ever had was 8,000. 8,000 people. Yep. That's amazing. Yep, yep. And like I said, it caught on like Wi-Fi. Now, I've had inquiries from all over. And a lot of my coming so forth, so forth, the blue, it, it, they are made that it, it's definitely been able to survive for 50 years. And a lot of them come in support it because of that. How did it? I made one. I made one. one I made two pounds and two bets, and I hadn't lost yet. <laughs> that is, it's gonna be hot. And you know me, and I hadn't lost that bet yet. I, I, you're not gonna lose it this weekend. <laughs> Especially when it comes to the heat. That's right. But anyway, people still come out in spite of the heat and enjoy them. Still, a lot of the food, the food, all all types of food. Like to say, they'll come out and enjoy themselves with all of him. If you hear that noise in the background, that's the guy getting getting on stage with it. Yeah, I imagine there's a, a little I'm bit of walking. little bit of setup to get everything going. Yeah, if I'm kind of walking away from it, that's why I prefer the cell phone. If I can get away from the background noise. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. And for folks who want to come, when does it start? Does it start on Friday? Well, if you had came through Sunday, you'd have thought it started Sunday because the people was here. I mean, if it, I guess I don't understand, but it, the people say I will never understand because I'm on the outside. I mean, I'm on the inside, and they're on the outside looking in. It, to me, it's just a part of what I do, but it is bigger than that. How did it? How did the festival originally start, Mister Hunt? Uh, like I said, we were back there at the barbecue back in 1972. We invited the whole community. <laughs> and fortunate enough and blessed enough, we were able to feed them and, and didn't give them beverages. I mean, it, it was alcohol and beverages like beer and soda pop for free. Free, just and a community event. Didn't didn't cost anything. Didn't cost nothing. Like it doesn't cost anything now. That's incredible. And, and it's at it's, it's at the Blue it's Front Cafe. How do I, yeah, how do you do right, it? Right, yeah. The stage is right, right beside the Blue Front Cafe. And the State Department of Tourism begged me, don't change it. Don't do anything to the blue farm, but just don't let it fall down. Because it looks original, which it is, it's 90% original. The only thing I've done to it since I've been here is put in some inside upon it. 
So you know what that entails. Oh, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. And your family's been running the Blue Front Cafe for how long? It started in 1948. I was one year old. Really? 19, 1948. And I get the question, about where do I live? I start living at the Blue Front. Not literally live here. I spend most of my time here. Go home, eat, sleep, and take a bath. Right back at the Blue Front. When I knew myself, I was bouncing around the Blue Front. Seven four years. And is there is there live music at the Blue Front other times than during the festival? We don't we we don't do a regular schedule. We used to before the virus came on. We're slowly getting back on on track where we do it every two weeks at the Blue Front itself, not just the live at the Blue Front itself. Well, and the other the other big event big event for the Blue Front is the seventy second anniversary. That's a big event. We have a lot of live music. That's incredible. Uh, tell us a little bit about about your music. Um, we I, I know we were when we came in, we were listening to it. Tell, tell us a little bit about uh, your music and, and your career as a, a blues musician. Well, I never set out to be a public performer. You know, back in the back in the early days, the old guys, Big Trump was full of musicians, blues wise especially. And of course, the blue farm was the gathering place, and the guy would come out with the guitar on the horse or on the back. And they would sit down and play for tips, you know. You know, I was just curious what they was doing and watching and so forth and so forth. And the guy that created the Big Tony style of blues, which is Henry Stuckett, he was my neighbor. And that was the first guitar I put hand on in 1957. Got introduced to the guitar by Henry Stuckett. And as time passed, this morning would come my older guy out, and I was sitting watching play it from the front porch of the blue front. And just picked up a few corners and pick it up, put it down, month after month, year after year. Uh, in the mid, mid to late seven, I got back active into it. I kind of laid with it then. And Alan Lomax from the Smithsonian Institute said he heard there was someone still left a bit Tony to play, to play the bit Tony style of blues. And he stumbled across me, still short interview, and he went by to me, sent someone else back. Uh, in the late to early nineties, and this guy was church of it too. So we took off from there. Since then, I've been traveling a lot, going on a lot in days. I'm scared to go to Montreal, Canada. I got a whole list of uh, engagements if I submit to Donna, and it's all because of what I learned from the old school guys. And it means a lot to the state because I had some guys tell me this morning that most of the hotels in the other city is booked up because of the festival. Really? So the other city doesn't have a lot of hotels now. But they said most of them are booked up because of the festival, especially if you're, if you're kind of up here in the city. They said they still got some in what you call the low grade motel. But they said it's all because of the festival. You know, I, I think a lot of people don't realize that uh, there are multiple. Um, styles of blues you you want to tell us a little more about what the what the bentonia school um sort of what that what that kind of blues is like when i when people, different ones these are music professionals that people who are kind of preserve different style of music and they say what sets the bentonia style apart it has a real deep smooth haunting sound and that is created the way we and with the old guys perfected what they call the G string on the guitar. Now, good, it's no different than guitar. It's a guitar to guitar. But it's the way the old guys perfected the G string, because they couldn't read and write it. If you ask them what, what, what note were they playing, they couldn't tell you. Now, the music professional, some say it's a major, some say it's a minor. And I guess what? I let them argue about that because I don't know. I don't know how to tone it. <laughs> But you know how to play it, that's for sure. What what was uh, tell us what it was like to win a I mean to, to be nominated for a, a Grammy. Do you know our uh, I get asked that question awful lot. I don't know if it's supposed to mean any different. I mean, I highly appreciate it to it. But it doesn't change me one way or the other. Win or lose. Doesn't change me one way or the other. And they got rid CBS got ready to do the interview. 
he asked me that I had to go, well, I going to get the big head because I got nominated. <laughs> I told my head that I'm sick and tell me that all my life, my head like concrete, don't nothing swell it. Well, that's great. Mr. Holmes, thank you for being with us, and I uh, hope everybody will come out this weekend to the Blue Front Cafe for the Bentonia Blues Festival. Come on out and beat the heat and enjoy themselves. Right, come on and uh, enjoy that heat and some fantastic music right there at the Blue Front Cafe in Bentonia, Mississippi. And a lot of great food. Thanks so much. This is Lucian Smith in for Paul Gallo on the Gallo Radio Show on Super Talk.